Today I'm going to share with you a fairly unique way to remove hot spots from skin in Photoshop. It's super fast, it's super precise and it uses luminosity masks. So without any further ado, directly let's get started. First of all, don't forget to remove the blemishes. So here we have our photo and here we have our blemishes removed. If you don't know how to do that, here's a video. You can watch the previous lesson. And now all you have to do is to create a layer with everything merged in at the top. To do that, press Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E. Whoops, I'm sorry about that. Now, let's turn it black and white. Let's desaturate it. How do we do that? Press Ctrl, Shift, U, Command, Shift, U to desaturate. Now, we are aiming to create a mask that precisely targets the hotspots. And how do we do that? We need to make the hotspot areas absolutely white and the rest of the areas absolutely black. And one of the easiest ways to do it is using levels. Press Ctrl or Command, L to open up levels. You can also do it with curves. Absolutely the same thing. And now take the leftmost slider to the right and the rightmost slider to the left. Pay close attention and precisely make sure that the hot spots are absolute white and the rest of the areas are absolute black. You can of course leave a little leeway for good transition. So I'm going to go to 214 on the left and let's extend it a little bit on the right to make the transition a bit smoother. But not too smooth. About 230 is fine. Let's keep it 230, 214. You can even extend it on the left hand side up to you. I'm going to keep it strict, 214. All right. Hit OK once you're satisfied with it. Have a look. Only the hot spots are white and the rest of the areas are black. Now, apart from the skin, other areas are selected as well. That's not an issue. So, how do we turn this into a mask? Simply go to channels, click on channels right here. If you don't see channels, Go to window and make sure channels right here is checked. It will take you to channels. Now to make a mask out of this, hold the control or command and click on the thumbnail of RGB right here. Anything that is white is selected and anything that is black is not selected. Let's go back to layers. Now that we have a mask, we don't need this anymore. So with the selection active, let's select the topmost actual layers that we are working with. And on top of that, let's create a solid color adjustment layer for it. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose solid color. And we're going to choose a bright skin color like this. You can even modify it to your liking. So let's make it even brighter. Hit OK. Right now it seems that all of it is gone, but there's so much more work to do as well. So here's the before and here is the after already. This is fantastic. But if you zoom in, you would notice that it has its own issues. Have a look at these areas. These are absolutely flat. So here's the before. Here's the after. It's covering them, but it's not realistic, right? Have a look at these areas. These are absolutely flat. So to make sure that they're not flat, we need to use blend modes. Now, what is the blend mode which darkens stuff? Multiply, right? And darkens in a nice gradient. If you choose the straightforward blend mode darken, it works. But if you zoom in, you'll still see flat areas. That is why I recommend using multiply. Now, even now there are little problems here and there. See, it's way too sharp. So how do we make the sharpness go away? The problem is, if you have a look at the mask, if you hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the mask to view it, you will notice that with all of the textures, it is just way too sharp. So how do we make it less sharp? Simple. Do the opposite and that is blurring. Now you can directly apply blur right here, but a better way is opening up the properties if you cannot see properties, go to window and make sure properties is checked. Make sure the mask is selected and then simply increase the feather to soften it out. I'm going to soften it out a little bit more. Maybe 2.4 or 2.2 would be a good number. Hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the mask back again and now have a look. The issues are gone. So without feathering, have a look. It's not nice, but with feathering, have a look all of those issues are gone. Now, of course, this is way too much removal. Here's the before. Here's the after. We wouldn't go that far. Let's reduce the opacity to about, let's say, 60%. Now, even 60 is heavy handed. If you want lesser, you can go lesser. But this is how you do it. And at any point in time, you can double click on the thumbnail of the adjustment layer and change the color to whatever you like. You can make it more saturated, less saturated, brighter, darker, it's up to you. So I'm going to keep it this way, hit OK. Also, you can apply different colors in different areas, all up to you. 
Now, here's another problem. It is removing the hot spots from every place, from the hair as well, before, after. We don't want it. We only want it in certain areas. So how do we control that? To ensure that we are not disturbing this mask, in case we want to bring back some areas in the future, just put that one layer in a group. So with this layer selected and only this layer selected, press Ctrl or Command G. And let's name it. Remove hotspots. Now create a mask of this group. That way you have two masks for the same layer. Hold the Alt key or the Option key and then click on the mask button to create a negative mask. Take the brush and paint with white in areas where you want them to be removed. Like this. Like this. You can control the flow and opacity to your liking if you want less removal or more removal. That's up to you. This area right here. And that's all I wanted. Again, here's the before. Here's the after. And after this process, you can do dodging and burning like this. And there's going to be easy videos on that in the future. And there are already videos on that. Everything is linked up in the description. Now, this is an easy process. And to keep it clean, by the way, let's collapse this group. But if you don't want to do any of this and you want to save time, you have 300, 400 images, or you just want to spend your time shooting, you can also consider using plugins. So let's turn this off and let's compare it with the plugin version. So for it, let's create a new layer at the top. Press Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E to create a merged layer of everything that you see in the canvas. And then let's go to filter, retouch for me. And by the way, if you want to try these plugins, you can check this link right here or check the links in the description. You can try it for free. And if you want to get it, I have discount codes as well in the description. Retouch for me mattifier. And it does a fantastic job. So at the top, you have the blend slider. So less of it, more of it, everything removed. So I want somewhere around 68%. That's nice. You can also choose to make a mask, but for simplicity, I'm just going to hit apply. And let's compare it with our manual result. So this is what we did manually. And this is retouch for me. Very, very close. It just comes down to your preferences and how much time you want to give. If you want to do it manually and if you want to give it time, you also get the option to create several multiple solid color adjustment layers with different colors. You can change the color at any point in time and it's up to you. So that's how to remove hotspots in Photoshop. Our target is to just create a precise mask of the hotspot areas. To do it, create a merged layer at the top desaturate it and use levels or curves to make the hotspot areas absolutely white and the rest of the areas absolutely black. Create a mask out of it and fill that area with a solid color adjustment layer. Change the blend mode to multiply. You can even blur the mask slightly and that's pretty much it. Control the opacity to your liking. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I don't know why I picked up the pen. I would like to take this moment to thank all of these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thanks a lot for watching again. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. Lucky, lucky, lucky me. Uh oh.